HRC, 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 Hebrew Reader, Hebrew Reader, Hebrew Reader Church. Welcome to Hebrew Readers Church, brothers and sisters. I'm your brother Kasafo. And I'm your brother Zachwa. I hope you all are enjoying this Sabbath day. And we're going to give a shout out to Zachwa for that new intro. Hey. That thing is bumping. Praise the highest, man. All right. Before we get started, brothers and sisters, as believers, we all have a duty. We must perform for Allah. I am. We ask that you all, if Allah guides you to do so, and if the lessons are helpful for you in your walk, to share the lessons. Post them on your social medias. You can edit, chop, cut segments, whatever you want to do. We just ask if our line places it on any man or woman's heart to partake in the work to spread the gospel in this fashion. Amen. All right. So thus far, we see the sisters are zealous to perfect their goal of being a virtuous woman. So, in our goal of helping perfect the sisters in this endeavor, we will be discussing head coverings, the power they hold, what they signify, why wear them, and in what instances they ought to be worn. We also will discuss hairstyles, jewelry, makeup, according to the law. We hope this is edifying and enjoyable for you all. So let's jump in by answering who is the head of a woman. Can you read 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, please? But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is Allah. Thus we see a man is the head of the woman, so a father is head of his daughter, and he gives her to a man of understanding. King Sirach, chapter 7, verse 25, please. Marry thy daughter, and so shalt thou have performed a weighty matter, but give her to a man of understanding. That man of understanding becomes her husband. When he becomes a husband, let's see how things change. Can you read Ephesians chapter 5, verse 23, please? For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. The head of a woman has care for her body because he is her savior, just as Christ is the savior of the church. We see that's the case for a husband, and the scriptures also show that's the same case for a father to protect his daughter's body as well. Can you read Sirach chapter 7 verse 24, please? Hast thou daughters, have a care for their body, and show not thyself cheerful toward them. Now we see a father or a husband is the head of a woman. Now respect of Allah I am, a man ought not to cover his head because he is the glory of Allah. Can you read 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 7, please? For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of Allah. So now, we got the reason for men not to cover their heads. Now let's see why women ought to cover their heads. Continue reading, please. But the woman is the glory of the man. Continue. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. All right. The reason a woman ought to cover her head is because she is the glory of the man. She's created from the man, and she was made for the man. For these reasons, she should have power on her head by wearing a covering because of the angels who sinned in fornication before the flood to take married women for their own wives. Now we know the reason a woman ought to cover her head while praying or prophesying. Now, is there any other reason or any other time where a woman ought to cover her head? The scriptures show a woman also ought to cover her head when going about in the world to avoid torments. Can you read Acts of Thomas, chapter 56, please? We're jumping in in the Acts of Thomas. Concerning these, the man who accompanied me 
said the following, The souls hung up by the tongue are slanderers, and such as have spoken false and disgraceful words and are not ashamed. Those hung up by their hair are the shameless, who are not ashamed at all to go about with uncovered heads in the world. Now we see, it's not only when praying or prophesying that a woman ought to be covered, but also when going about in the world that she ought to cover herself. It's a woman who isn't ashamed that would not cover herself in the world. But what kind of woman would cover herself in the world? Let's find out. Sirach chapter 26, verse 24 to 25, please. All right. A dishonest woman contends shame, but an honest woman will reverence her husband. A shameless woman shall be counted as a dog, but she that is shamefaced will fear the Lord. So an honest and shamefaced woman will fear the Lord and reverence her husband to cover herself in the world. Now, is there any evidence that women would cover their heads when out in public? The law helps our understanding. Can we read Numbers chapter 5, verse 18, please? And the priest shall set the woman before Ahia and uncover the woman's head and put the offering a memorial in her hands which is the jealousy offering. And the priest shall have in his hand the bitter water that causes the curse. Through the law, we see the only time a woman would be publicly uncovered was pertaining to the requirements of the law of jealousy, which helps understand the women truly went about covered in the world otherwise. You can also confirm this fact by the graven images that the Assyrians made of us from the ancient times of the kingdom of Judah in 2 Kings chapter 18, verse 13 to 37, when the Assyrians besieged Lachish, because the women and daughters of Judah's heads were covered as they were being led away captive. There is a link here in this video to be able to look at these images, and also you'll find the link in the description box. Okay, so with this understanding, in the culture of believers, women wear head coverings when going about in the world to maintain shamefacedness. This means when at home, not out in the world, they don't have to wear a head covering in the presence of their own husband and their own children. Also, when at home in the presence of other immediate family, not including that of a male cousin or an uncle, it is permissible for a woman's head to be uncovered. The women at home with just her immediate family need only wear a covering when praying or prophesying, as in teaching scripture to the children or literally being filled with the Holy Spirit to prophesy. On the other hand, when at home in the presence of male cousins, uncles, non-relatives, or other people's children, they will cover their heads for power in the spirit, warding off evil, and the sign of their husband's authority in the faith of Yahweh Christ. The simplicity of the admonitions of the Apostle Paul for women to adorn themselves in the spirit of shamefacedness will lead them to cover themselves in the fear of Ahaya when going about in the world, living honestly by reverencing their husbands. Can we read 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9, please? In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety. Can we get the definition of shamefacedness please in g127 perhaps from g1 as a negative particle and g1492 through the idea of downcast eyes that in itself lets us know this isn't a haughty spirit all right continue please bashfulness that is towards men modesty or modesty towards alahayim all reverence shamefacedness we see the spirit that shamefacedness leads to is modesty bashfulness towards men and fear towards alahayim just as sirach was relaying righteous women like susanna will cover herself when in public being raised by her parents according to the law of moses as an example of a believing woman's shamefacedness in the world of old time can we read daniel this is out of the book of Susanna in the Apocrypha. Can you read Daniel chapter 13, verse 2 and 3, please? 
And he took a wife whose name was Susanna, the daughter of Chalcius, a very fair woman and one that feared the Lord. So this woman was shamefaced because she feared the Lord. Continue, please. Her parents also were righteous and taught their daughter according to the law of Moses. So raising a daughter according to the law will bring forth the good fruits like the spirit of shamefacedness and reverence for the Lord. Can you jump to Daniel 13, verse 29 and 32, please. <laughs> and said before the people, send for Susanna, the daughter of Chelseas, Joachim's wife. And so they sent. So they sent for her to come out in public, right? <laughs> Continue, please. So she came with her father and mother her children, and all her kindred. Now Susanna was a very delicate woman, and beauteous to behold. And these wicked men commanded to uncover her face, for she was covered, that they might be filled with her beauty. Then we see she was truly shamefaced, covering herself up when out and about in public. Now not every woman is led to cover their face, nor does the law require it. Susanna was dealt the measure of face to do so, yet, Women who fulfill the law to be shamefaced and cover their heads in the world are also fulfilling the righteousness of faith measures out to them. As followers of Christ, let's get the rest of the admonitions given for our sisters from Paul the Apostle. Can we jump back to the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 1 and 2, please. Be ye followers of me, even as I am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I deliver them to you. All right. These ordinances of the Lord were delivered through Paul. Let's jump to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 5 and 6, please. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head. For that is even all one as if she were shaven. So if... You pray or prophesy at home or out in public with your head uncovered. It's a dishonor to the man who is your head and is as if your actual hair was shaved, which was a dishonor to your head as well. So shaving the head is a dishonor in the physical realm where you're dishonoring your husband and Elohim in the spirit. Continue to verse 6, please. Um, for if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. So if the woman would not cover her head when praying or prophesying, let her get her hair cut down low. Continue, please. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. Head cover was that important that this ultimatum of the Lord was given so women who wouldn't cover their heads would be shared or shaved so it would be known that they dishonored their head by all. A woman's hair is her glory. Can you read 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 15? But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a covering. Now, if she won't wear a head covering on her head, her very hair of her head, that was a glory to her because it was given her for a covering of her cranium, would be shared or shaved bald. Can you read 1 Corinthians 11 and 6, please? So a woman long hair is a testimony of her to be covered. So that's why a woman is naturally, naturally, a woman's hair is longer than a man because it's a testimony that she needs to cover it. It's given to her to cover her head, to show that she needs to cover her head. <laughs> by Elohim <laughs> law. <laughs> um, word six. Yes. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. So, baldness is an affliction from the Lord for haughtiness, according to Isaiah 3 and 16. Can you read Isaiah 3 and 16 and verse 24, please? Right. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 16. Moreover, Isaiah says, because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go and making a tinkling with their feet. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 24. 
And it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell, there shall be stink. And instead of a girdle, a rent. And instead of well-set hair, baldness. So one can understand the correlation of pride. So it's not to honor her head brings the shame of baldness as opposed to the lowly who honor their head and have their well-set hair for their glory. Seeing a woman's hair is her glory, the intent of the ordinance of the Lord by Paul is so that woman would rather keep her hair and just wear her head covered. Being covered in this verse isn't referring to a woman's actual hair itself being covered because if she won't wear an actual head covering, then her hair ought to be shorn or shaven so that you can know the covering isn't in reference to the actual hair of the woman. Paul appeals to us to consider within ourselves the righteousness of a woman veiling herself with a head covering by the truth of the matter that can be seen in nature itself. Similar to what Zach was just relaying, Paul himself in that time convinced the church with the same understanding. Can you read 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 to 16, please? Right. Judging yourselves, is it comely that a woman pray to Allah and uncover? There we see. He posted the question for us to consider. Now he goes into creation to teach us the answer whether it is comely for a woman to pray unto Allah and uncover. Continue, please. Do if not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him. But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a covering. So he showed the righteousness of both genders. Unless a man's hair is dreaded like a Nazarite, for example. It's a shame for a man to have long hair like a woman. Hence, it's a shame for him to pray uncovered. And it's a glory to a woman to have long hair because her hair is given to her for a covering. Hence, a woman's hair naturally grows longer than men's in general. And this naturally shows it is not comely for a woman to pray on Talahayim uncovered. Just that it is not comely for a woman not to have her hair on her head for her glory. So just as a woman's long hair is a glory to her, wearing a head covering when praying on Talahayim is a glory to her as well. Verse 16, please. But if any man seem to be contentious. Now, some may be contentious and argue whether this understanding is true that women ought to wear head coverings when praying or prophesying. Paul tells us the answer to such disputes. Continue, please. We have no such custom, neither the churches of Elohim. Paul exhorts us that we have no such custom to believe otherwise as followers of Yahweh Christ nor in the churches of Elohim around the world. So let us hold fast the truth that a woman praying or prophesying while covered unto Elohim is comely, and going about in the world covered is a spirit of shamefacedness. To fear the Lord and reverence your husband as our stance on the subject of head coverings, because we have no such custom to believe or do otherwise. Now remember, sisters, your countenance of mind and shamefacedness to cover your heads when out in public is invaluable when you show your fear of the Lord by doing so. Can you read Sirach, chapter 26, verse 15, please? A shamefaced and faithful woman is a double grace, and her continent mind cannot be valued. So in closing on head coverings, the reason a woman wears it when praying and prophesying is because you're the glory of the man created from the man, and for the man. So you wear it for these reasons, because the angels that sinned before the flood with women, and the reason you wear it when out in public, is to maintain your shamefacedness in the fear of the Lord, and honesty to reverence your husband and honor your father, in order to avoid the torments for not doing these things. Hopefully that's helpful edification on the matter of head coverings, and when they ought to be worn. And for further edification, just visit the website at HebrewReaders.com where you see it here. You can hit those three slashes to bring up the other tabs and get down to the simplicity for women. Hit that plus sign, bring up the drop tabs, and there you have the further edification on women's head coverings, garments, and hairstyles and appearance. We're going to touch on those other things in the next lesson to come as well. So this reference is good for both lessons. And when you hit the women's head covering, it's going to bring up 
the women's head covering garments for you to get that edification. Hopefully it's all helpful and this lesson here today continues to be helpful. Now jumping into hairstyles. Transition into this. We have discussed before that making yourself beautiful with good intent is lawful, just as Judith did. Can you read Judith chapter 10, verse 2 and 3, please? She rose where she had fallen down and called her maid and went down into the house in which she abode on the Sabbath days and in her feast days and pulled off the sackcloth which she had on and pulled off the garments of her widowhood and washed her body all over with water and anointed herself with precious ointment and braided the hair of her head and put on a tire upon it. All right. What is the definition of tire? Can you read the Hebrew definition H6287, please? An embellishment, that is fancy headdress, beauty, bonnet, goodly ornament, tire. There we see a good example in that Judith did her hair and was still sure to wear headdress in respect of her shamefacedness not to go about in public uncovered. On the other hand, there is a place of torment for women who are turned unto fornication and plait the hair of their head with the intent to entice men through that outward adorning unto perdition, rather than just for the simplicity of making themselves beautiful. Can you read Apocalypse of Peter, chapter 7, please? And again, behold, two women, they hung them up by their neck and by their hair. They shall cast them into the pit. These are they which plaited their hair, not to make them beautiful, but to turn them to fornication, that they might ensnare the souls of men unto perdition. So there is no law against women braiding, plaiting, twisting their hair, even with extensions to make oneself beautiful. The women just need to be mindful of their heart's intent, because if they are doing it to draw someone into fornication, or bewitch them by outward attraction, punishment is reserved for that because of their ill intent. Can you read Reuben chapter 5, verse 5, please? Flee therefore fornication, my children, and command your wives and your daughters that they adorn not the heads and faces to deceive the mind. Notice, he didn't say you can't adorn your heads and faces. He is saying you can't do it to deceive someone's mind. The reason being, Continue reading. Because every woman who uses these wiles has been reserved for eternal punishment. The women who use the tactics of adorning their hair with comely hairstyles to deceive someone will be punished. So braiding, plaiting, or twisting the hair in itself, or getting different hairdos in itself is no sin. If your heart's intent is right, to dress your hair as you please to make yourself beautiful. Your hair was given to you for comeliness and glory, so making it beautiful is no sin in itself. Can you read Testament of Naphtali, chapter 2, verse 8, please? Can I touch myself? Yes, yeah, sure. Right. Uh, women have to definitely be mindful of, of this because a lot of times women like to get dressed, and they like to look nice, and they want to be seen. And that being seen is actually leading them to fornication. Um, definitely for the women of our church, um, you shouldn't be taking pictures or wanting to be seen on social media in the first place. But if that is a struggle for somebody, then it's definitely the spirit of fornication. And even if you say that you're not trying to entice anybody or you're just doing it for you, by putting it out there, you're actually trying to entice them. It's actually the spirit of fornication leading you. So definitely be aware of that. Um, even when you're out and about, you know, what, what you may put on or the way you may style something, um, you have to be aware that the spirit of fornication isn't leading you because we know how it works. And if a woman goes out of the house like that, she's looking for male attention. So you have to definitely be careful of where your heart is and actually being aware of where your heart is and what your intent is. Again, we're going to touch more on that with apparel and appearance in the next lesson. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Testament of Naphtali, chapter 2, verse 8. But Allah made all things good in their order, 
the five senses in the head, and he joined on the neck to the head, adding to the hair also for comeliness and glory. So the lion gave it to you for comeliness and glory. So adorning it and making itself beautiful in itself is no sin. Even hair relaxes on against the law. Just ensure your heart's intent is upright. Although relaxes do burn and harm the hair, but that's one's personal choice. The only law women have to be mindful of when it comes to the hair of their heads is to be sure not to round the corner of their heads. Can you read Leviticus chapter 19, verse 27, please? You shall not round the corners of your heads. So, women may shave their heads bald, though it is a dishonor to your head, as your long hair is a glory unto you. As 1 Corinthians 11, verse 5 and 15 show, women may trim their hair as they like, so long as they don't shave the size of their heads bald alone in hairstyles like flat tops, fades, temp fades, or mohawks, because they will be rounding the corners of their heads, which is against the law. New scriptures, beautifying oneself is no transgression, so long as the intent of the heart is pure, and a sister understands it's the beauty of her inner self through the fruits of the spirit of righteousness that is of great price, and that's what she herself is adorned with in her heart. Can you jump back to oh, her? Okay. Oh, go ahead. Um, if a woman shaves her hair off, um, it's a clear distinction that she's in rebellion. Um, but it's not always the case because there's many diseases and, and things of that nature that actually a woman may lose her hair. But in that case, Elohim afflicted that person. So it still shows the same rebellion because if Elohim had to deal with you or Elohim had to take you through something, he's actually taking you through it so that you can come out of it and you will repent. So you see where a person is based off of the things that they do. Um, a lot of times for a lot of women, they may go through a life experience and after the life experience, they'll shave their hair which actually shows that they're going further away than getting closer to Elohim. And it's just a sign to see where a person is, a female specifically, um, so that everybody can understand that. Go ahead. Uh, you want me to read First Timothy? Um, yes, please. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broidered hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing piety with good works. Now, how do women profess piety, adorn themselves, so we can understand what Paul meant by not with broidered hair or jewelry or costly array? Let's read First Peter chapter 3, verse 3 and 4, please. Whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plait in the hair, and a wearing of gold, or of putting on of apparel? But let it be the hidden man of the heart, and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of Elohim of great price. So there's nothing wrong with making yourself fair for the sake of being beautiful, by braiding your hair, wearing jewelry, or nice-looking apparel. Just let your true adorning be of the heart in the fruits of shamefacedness and sobriety with a meek and quiet spirit. That simplicity will prosper in good works as women profess in piety and make you of great price to Ahaya, our Alahayim. On the opposite end, women through the influences of the world tend to place importance upon carnal things and outward show that shall not profit instead of focusing on the weighty matters of the heart. Yet the Apostle Thomas exhorted the women on what's truly profitable and lasting. Can you read Acts of Thomas, chapter 88, please? Then he said to the woman, Magdonia, Rise up from the ground and compose yourself. Take off thine ornaments and be mindful of yourself. For your clothes that ye have on shall not profit you. Neither shall the beauty of your body 
or your dress, neither your prestige status or the authority of this world. Esther, queen of the world in the days of the Persians, cared nothing for her high estate. Continue, please. Or the authority of this world, or the filthy sex with your husband shall benefit you, should you long for true fellowship. Now that's for another discussion to understand what was transpiring between her and her husband to make the intimacy filthy. Our focus today is that if you long for true fellowship with Yahweh Christ and Ahayala Ayam, don't hold value to think you will profit in that endeavor by your nice clothes, how you dress, your beauty of body, prestige of status in society, worldly authority, or abilities in the privacy of your bedroom. That's not to say having nice clothes, dressing well, taking care of your body, being rewarded with high positions or authority in your career for your working hard are bad things. It's just showing that all these things ought to be done and receive with humility of mind and not cause any sense of glory in ourselves because in the commandments of Allah I am, is nothing about first places or glory of any kind. But true life is about long suffering and humility in us. So, though it's no sin to keep yourself beautiful with good intent, being beautiful in the face or body is not where you hold value because in your longing for fellowship with Allah, you hold value in holiness with contentment, wherein is great gain, and adorning yourself with a meek and quiet spirit to be of great price to Allah, not seeking the outward reward of the pride and lust of the world in men of the world who hold high value in your fleshly beauty of face and body, as opposed to your spiritual beauty in the fruits of the spirit. Also, your prestige of status and authority in the world that you may have received isn't held in any high regard to you as the spirit of meekness doesn't permit us to think anything of ourselves as the case of Esther the Queen. So in your longing for fellowship with Allah, you count yourself an unprofitable servant doing as your master bid you. Remember Allah gave you your state or authority to help his people and that status and authority holds no profit for you because there's nothing in the commandments about first places or glory of any kind. So you would remain shamefaced and sober-minded to ensure you do what's right in the sight of Allah with what he gave you. Keep humility and long-suffering, not letting the prestige and status lift you up as the world teaches to do. The apostle goes on to exhort on why we ought not to hold value or think these carnal and worldly things to be profitable. If you're ready, continue reading, please. So the physical appearance of decoration means nothing. And the body grows old and changes, and raiment wears out. And authority and mastership passes away. And the fellowship of sex also passes away, and is, as it were, condemnation. Yahweh is the only thing that will last forever, as well as those that have their hope in him. So get the spirit of Yahweh in you by striving for humility and long-suffering in the law and fruits of the Spirit, to be truly beautiful in spirit in the sight of Allah and garner the status and prestige in heavenly places as his servants and children. In closing, be beautiful in appearance as he has given you the measure of faith to be. Remember the things that really matter. Right? Yeah. Now, in regards to women's grooming, a woman may line or design her eyebrows for beauty, so long as she's not making her eyebrows bald completely for the dead. Can you read Deuteronomy 14 and 1, please? Ye are the children of Ahia, your Elohim. You shall not cut yourselves, nor make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. So, the scriptures in regards to balding the eyebrows completely as opposed to lining or designing the eyebrows for beauty as the definition of baldness in H7144 says, baldness and utterly as definitions to help us understand this law in Deuteronomy 14 and 1 is in regards to making the eyebrows completely bald. That's against the law, unless it's for cleansing of a leper, but not when it pertains to designing the eyebrows for beauty, which is lawful. 
Be sure not to ball the eyebrows completely to draw eyebrows for beauty as well, because the practice of balding the eyebrows completely is a practice for the dead according to the law. So be sure not to bald your eyebrows completely for any reason aside from the cleansing requirements for leprosy. In light of the law on cutting yourselves, this leads to discussing shaving of the body hair. There is no law that restricts a woman from shaving her body hair so long as she doesn't cut herself for the dead. Now let's see the other laws for grooming your facial hairs. For sisters, can you read Leviticus chapter 19 verse 1 and 2 please? And the highest spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto all the congregation of children of Israel and say unto them, Ye shall be holy. For I, Ahayahayim, am holy. So this is for everybody. Can you read verse 27, please? You shall not round the corners of your heads, neither shalt thou mar the corners of thy beard. So it is lawful for women to shave their mustache and trim their beard if they have them. It's not lawful to shave their beard entirely, lest they mar the corners, as the law says. So take the trimmers and cut it really low, as low as you can, without actually shaving it to keep the law. Do we go over mar the corners? On the website. Okay. For further edification on what mar the corners mean, please visit the website at hebrewreaders.com. There's a tab in the Simplicity for Women pertaining to women's appearance. All right. Can you read the definition for beard in H2206, please? The beard, chin. The beard is indicating age, beard. Notice the laws pertaining to the beard on the chin. So women cannot shave the beard completely. Trimming it very low is best to ensure we keep the law. On the other hand, the law did not include the mustache, so the law doesn't prohibit shaving the mustache. All right. Women's jewelry. It is lawful for women to wear jewelry. They just need to take heed that their heart's intent isn't to deceive the mind of another unto fornication when they adorn themselves with jewelry because Ahaya gave ordinances that women are not to adorn their heads and faces to deceive the minds. So jewelry in itself is not a sin for women to wear, so long as their intent of heart is upright. Matter of fact, jewelry is among the things the daughters of Zion wore when in humility. Can you read Isaiah chapter 3 verse 19 to 21 please? The chains and the bracelets and the mufflers, the bonnets and the ornaments of the legs, and the headbands and the tablets. Tablets are perfumes, so of course smelling nice is righteous, <laughs> with the right intent. Continue, please. And the earrings, the rings, and nose jewels. So that brings us to see that body piercings are lawful too, by evidence of the nose jewels and earrings. In the law, it was lawful to pierce the ears of servants who loved their masters and wished to live with them forever in Exodus 21, 5 and 6 for confirmation that piercings are lawful. In regards to jewelry in general, Rebecca, for example, was also given jewelry for her wedding gift from Abraham to understand there's nothing wrong with wearing jewelry in itself. Can you read Genesis chapter 24, verse 47 and verse 53, please? Genesis chapter 24, verse 47. And I asked her and said, Whose daughter art thou? And she said, The daughter of Bethuel, Nahor's son, whom Melchab bare unto him. And I put the earring upon her face and the bracelets upon her hands. Uh, Genesis 24, verse 53. And the servant brought forth jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment and gave them to Rebekah. He gave also to her brother and to her mother precious things. So jewelry in itself is not against the law, but the intent of the heart is where the Lord looks to see if we are in the faith or not. Now, touching on tattoos. Tattoos are against the law. As it is written in Leviticus 19 and 28, you shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. Can you read the definition of marks, please, in H7085? Uh, marks, incision, and printment, tattoo, mark. So that one's very straightforward. If one already has tattoos, come unto Elohim as you are. Yet sin no more by getting more tattoos. For your baptism into Yache will be for the remission of former sins, as Romans 3 and 25 states. 
So there is no need to turn to a carnal element of seeking to be justified in the flesh by removing the tattoos from you, but have already been justified in the spirit by faith in the blood of the Son of Allah to purge your conscience from dead works. Now, women's makeup. The testimonies command for women not to adorn their heads and faces to deceive the mind of a man by outward attractions. We had read Testament of Reuben already, chapter 5, verse 5, where they said not to adorn their heads and faces to deceive the mind. And the testimonies command for women not to adorn themselves to deceive the mind of a man. Yet, beautifying oneself is not a sin in itself because the issue is the intent of the heart of the person. So hopefully that helps understand there's nothing wrong with mere makeup in the law as long as your intent is right. Just be mindful of the chemicals that are in the products because some of them can cause health issues. And definitely be mindful of what they're using for certain coloring. Oh, yes, because they're unclean creatures that get used for certain coloring. So you want to be mindful of that. Look into what you're getting. And in the next lesson, we're going to discuss women clothing and appearance from that perspective to get more edification. We hope this was helpful. And um, we here at Hebrew Readers Church are here to strengthen the brothers and sisters in the faith. If anyone needs filling of the spirit and is struggling with desires that are causing you not to be the man or woman you desire to be, please send us an email at hebrewreaders at gmail.com. We'd be glad to pray for you or with you. We all need each other and we have to work together to overcome Please like and share the video so that we may reach many more that are called and strengthen them in the spirit of Yache, our Lord and Savior. If Allah has placed it in your heart to become a member with us here at Hebrew Readers Church, please send us an email at hebrewreaders at gmail.com with subject member. With that, we love you all and may Allah keep you in your endeavors of righteousness. Why don't we get to spend more time with you again? On another day. Okay. Okay. Well, we hope everybody enjoyed the lesson. Um, just like Casa said, we're going to be coming on with the women's clothing lesson next. And uh, hopefully we can get to a good place for the women's series where the women have what they need and we can continue on with what Allah has us to do. And uh, we thank you guys for your much support. Thank you guys for always. Um, praying for us as we pray for you all and may I keep you all. Amen. Anything else for the cousin? Yeah. Get to go. All right. Oh, don't forget we have the new 2023-2024 Holy Calendar available on the website for download. I hope it's helpful for everybody. It's a user-friendly version to make it easy to keep track of the days and feast days. And with also a write up for education, understand the calendar. And any questions on it, just shoot us an email. I want to have understanding to help. So definitely go to HebrewReaders.com to get your calendar. We love you all. Peace. Ciao. Hebrew reader, Hebrew reader, Hebrew reader, church.